Hey, this is Guri. I'm here with master artist Monty Moore here at Breckenridge Brewery. We're talking about Comic-Con and Monty's work here and everything. And by the way, he has painted and done the art for my future ex-wife here. Who is? <laughs> Does she have a name? Uh, well, I just call her the Crocodile Queen because she's got those sexy crocodile boots. <laughs> and my, my girlfriend named it Crocobi Baby. <laughs> if that's not a future ex-wife name, I don't know what is. <laughs> that's the fun part when you do a painting is coming up with a name afterwards. <laughs> I had one that was a pinup of uh, a wood nymph. And she wasn't wearing much, and I wood burned it into pine wood. And so it was, of course, called Naughty Pine. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> All right, man. So, uh, tell me about like your work and everything, in case someone's not you know familiar with what you do. Sure. Um, I started out in comics and kind of moved into gaming uh, back in the early '90s, going to both local and national shows mm -hmm. uh, and doing graphic design during the day, and then trying to really build a career in gaming and comics and entertainment. Uh, and that's really been a 20-year process. Really? Uh, yeah. And uh, so some of the books that you see here on the counter uh, are art books that uh, have featured my all of my artwork that have been published in the industry. Uh, Heavy Metal Magazine did a feature uh, on my artwork. And then this is actually uh, my first movie, which is a feature film uh, called End of the Road, uh, mm -hmm. which has been renamed 123 Scream. Uh, and is actually coming out this week on on uh, video on demand, really? and then uh, other other uh, uh, portals after that, DVD okay. and things like that. So I've tried to take my creativity, which started out as drawings and paintings, mm -hmm. and leverage that into everything from graphic design to sculptures. Uh, this piece here of Thor, I did not sculpt this, but I designed it for a company that then had their sculptors bring it to life. I so see. almost everything I do. 98% is all traditional art. It's drawn, it's painted. Uh, even the Maryland you see in the background is acrylic and automotive paints on aluminum that is then clear coated, just like a car or motorcycle would be. And so, you know, people look, oh, what, what program do you use to create that? And I'm like, ah, oh, there's no program there. That's the real deal. That's a, a painting that somebody can own and enjoy. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've kind of made that conscious choice to stay traditional because I can sell my drawings and paintings. Mm -hmm. And it actually allows me to have, uh, in my opinion, a more uh, commercially fruitful career sure. because I have originals that I can sell. And if I was only a digital artist, I would only get to create that, paid to create the art once. Right, right. Mm -hmm. you know, it seems to me like you're working a lot of different mediums, is that? Yeah, I'm really rare in the industry because I'm a bit of a jack of all trades and I find new things like uh, when I was in Germany I wanted to buy some sculptures and pretty soon I was working for the company or the stormtrooper chair that you see over here on the left which was designed for the 501st uh, uh, you know, battalions so that they can sit in this chair in their armor. I love the diversity of painting an airplane or a guitar one day, then designing a t-shirt the next, and a movie poster the next day. Um, I am I already did one movie poster recently for Roger Corman. Have you, anybody oh, fans yeah. of the original, like Death Race and Piranha and all that? Uh, so his next movie coming out, I've already designed the creatures for, and I'll be doing the movie poster for that as well. Nice. Uh, and again, those are all real paintings, just like the, you know, the history of a real movie posters was they were paintings, they're not photo montages. Right. Um, so the, the drawback is you don't get known for just one thing. If I was Jim Lee in the comics industry, it's like, man, this guy can draw, you know. Jim never set out to be an inker or a colorist or anything like that. That guy could draw X-Men and he, you know, he was awesome at it. And for some reason, I think maybe just due to my personality, I love doing different stuff. Uh -huh. So when the motorcycle industry boomed a couple of years ago, and I'm a big bike guy myself, I was like, man, I, I want to paint some motorcycles. I want to, you know, raise the bar right. and bring an illustrator's skill set to steel. And so I didn't really have a problem finding new clients and professional builders. And, you know, I painted bikes for NASCAR and, you know, Rusty Wallace and all this kind of stuff. And, and that's fun, too, because you're painting on this round 3D surface and then people ride it. So rather than somebody saying, ah, I never get to see that because it's sitting on a wall, you know, they can go for a ride or you can go to a show like Sturgis and mm -hmm. 100,000 people, 500,000 people, you know, are 
just sitting around all day long taking pictures of these motorcycles you painted going, that is sick. <laughs> <laughs> so I, awesome. I, I do enjoy that. Right on. Yeah. Right on. Now, so like, as far as like all your work, kind of thing, what have like some of the greatest hits I would say like that people would know you for? Um, I've done a fair amount of Star Wars work for uh, Lucasfilm. Like this is a 30th anniversary print for uh, the Empire Strikes Back. Nice. So I've been to a lot of the conventions around the mm -hmm. country for that. Um, I did win the World Fantasy Art Show twice uh, when I was younger. Uh, I was still in my 20s, I think, so 1998 and 2001, pinups that I had drawn, um, which were just pencil drawings, won for best black and white art. And wow. so I think that helped kind of set the stage for the skill set that I try to bring. Um, and, you know, if I look at the gaming industry, I can pretty much say I've worked for almost every company. You know, really? people are like, oh man, I love Magic the Gathering. I'm like, I've done that. <laughs> I used to play D&D &D when I was a kid. I've done that, <laughs> you know? So coming from a gaming background, mm -hmm. you know, when I was growing up, I wasn't influenced so much by Frank Frazetta as some people might have been, yeah. but I was influenced by the guys who were drawing D&D. &D. Larry uh -huh. Elmore, Clyde Caldwell, Keith Parkinson, right. the guys who when Dragon Magazine would come, I, you know, I wasn't reading it, I was there for the pictures, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I had no idea that 20 years later, not only would I be doing that artwork, but they would be calling me a peer and a friend. Wow. Uh, Larry and I do shows together in Europe. And talk about a you know full circle moment to sort of use the term. You know, when your idol is sitting next to you and he's like, hey, Monty, pass me a pencil. Or, hey, you should buy Monty's book. And you're like, that guy's the <laughs> shit. <laughs> so it's, you know, that's pretty sweet. So That's very badass. Yeah. Uh, as, you know, as far as motorcycles, you know, the, even the first couple of years I was doing art on bikes, you know, pretty much every show coast to coast from Las Vegas to Sturgis, a bike I painted, you know, went there and won or I was there for best paint or best art. And uh, so it feels good, you know, when right. people recognize uh, that yeah. and, you know, you can walk into Walmart or something and see your Star Wars design, you know, or go into a show uh, like a comic store, like I've been in Germany and things like that. And they're like, why are you taking a picture of this? I'm like, that's mine, I designed that. They're like, sure, and I, you know, I opened my ID and I'm like, that's me, and they're like, hey, get a picture. He's in our store, you know, because then I can walk up and if it's a ultra pro play mat, like for the, uh, uh, the card sleeves, you know, yeah. when they print those card sleeves for the game players, they print those things by the millions. You know, and yeah. so when people come up at a show and they're like, oh my God, my whole deck is that hot chick you drew. You know, like this was actually one of the pieces that was a, one of the first sleeves that Ultra Pro did of my okay. artwork. And, uh, you know, nobody was really doing the sexy girls at the time. And that stuff was like gamer crack, you know. They didn't even reprint it. They're like, well, we should probably reprint that because it sold out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yeah, you probably should. And give me a penny for everyone you sell. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, you know, over the years, there have been some great successes. Mm -hmm. uh, I was really happy to work with uh, Doug Jones, who's here on the left, in my first feature film. And he's known for playing Abe Sapien in the Hellboy films, oh. um, Pan's Labyrinth. He was both Pan and Fawn. He was okay. in Legion. I mean, the nicest guy ever. So to, you know, write screenplays and say, oh, I, might, I might suck at this, you know, this might not go anywhere, but I want to give it a try. And then to have some success. Right. You know, it's not like you're going to be, you know, Guillermo del Toro the first time it's out, but you're like, Ooh, I actually beat the odds and got it done. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm, I'm happy with a slow, steady, progressful career right. rather than being an overnight sensation and then being gone. Right. And I've seen those guys come and go in the industry and they make bags of cash. You know, they're walking around like drug dealers probably. And I'm like, man, how come I never get that? But then five years later, you're still there. You still yeah. got a nice fan base. So, you know, I always tell people, don't be that guy. You know, be the guy who's like your hero. And it doesn't matter if it's Boris Vallejo or it's a writer or mm -hmm. whatever. It's like, build a career, you know, build fans. Don't be a oh. jerk. Because in this day and age with Facebook and all the other stuff, if you're a jerk to somebody, it will get out, <laughs> you know. Back in the old days, you could just, you know, pawn that stuff off. You're like, I got not going to talk to anybody. Now it's like, guess who's a uh, lame-o? <laughs> it will be out there in, the, in, the, in a minute. <laughs> so you don't want to be that guy. <laughs> All right, man, so what are you working on now? What, what's coming up? 
Um, well, I just finished a couple illustrations, uh, the pinup girl here in the background. Um, I did have uh, another feature film, was re-optioned. It's called Cutter. Uh, it's a horror film that takes place down in the bayou. Nice. And they recently signed uh, Jason Fleming, who's been known for Transporter 2, Clash of the Titans, Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels, right. uh, League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. He's going to play the title role. And uh, so they're attaching some other talent as well. And uh, I'm also going to get to be the art director, which is great because then you get to have that artistic input to say, this is what the set looks like. This is what some of the costume looks like. Mm -hmm. And so it kind of makes me like the Swiss Army knife of creativity. You know, you're like, you need some writing, you need a costume, I can do that. Um, so, uh, so I've got that coming up. I finished mm -hmm. some book covers recently. Um, I was asked to actually do the Women of Marvel trading card series. Really? Um, and I've done a lot of sketch cards over the years for mm -hmm. Lord of the Rings and Star Wars, Marvel, Lady Death. And um, I actually had a backlog of like just private commissions, fans who want artwork. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I said, you know, I'm just going to turn down a couple of jobs. I'm going to get to some of those paintings that people have been waiting for, whether it's a trading card or a, you know, Transformers original just for them. And I'm just going to do some work for fans for a while um, and uh, take care of them because they're important too. Oh, no. And uh, and they've been waiting a while because <laughs> it's like, I'm busy. When I don't get busy, I'll get that done. And I thought, uh, if I don't stop turning down some jobs, I'm never going to get these done. Um, so I have that going on. And then uh, probably going to start another screenplay. Really? That's uh, actually, I wrote the story 10 years ago, and it's kind of been waiting for me. Uh -huh. And I wanted to get my chops down as a writer and take some screenwriting courses, read mm -hmm. the books, you know, know what I'm doing rather than winging it. Right. And uh, so this will be my 10th screenplay that I'll have okay. written. And I've been hired to write too for clients over the years as well. Uh, and then uh, I'm going to go to LA in a couple weeks and we're mm -hmm. going to finish the editing for Screenplay, okay. uh, which is a found footage horror that I wrote, produced, and directed. Right. Uh, and so, um, we're hopefully putting the finishing touches on that. We had to do a couple of pickup shots, and uh, those are already done. And hopefully, you know, that'll be ready to kind of market and, and start showing to the public. Nice, nice. Yeah. Now for uh, Denver Comic Con, what are you, what are you going to be displaying, and what, what can people expect from your booth? Uh, it's going to be pretty big. I'll have a 20-foot space, and it'll be 10 times what you see here. There'll be a full range of sculptures from life-size bus to dragon coffee tables. Um, I'll have an expanded line of the Star Wars products. Awesome. Uh, the chairs, maybe even some sleeping bags and some other things that'll mm -hmm. expand. Uh, my seventh art book just came out. I'll have my films, uh, obviously. And then pretty big array of, of both originals and prints. So okay. what I try to do for the fans is cater to the person who really just wants that small memento of, hey, you know, I got three, five bucks, you know, whatever. It, you know, get a sticker, get something signed, a small print, a mermaid or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, you know, to the person who's like, hey, I, I collect originals and that's what I'm after. You know, and they maybe have a bigger budget. So sure. I try to cater to everybody. Mm -hmm. And I've been doing conventions for over 20 years. So I have a pretty good, you know, feel for that. Uh, and then I don't think, yeah, by then I won't have anything from Making Monsters, which is mm -hmm. a, a show on the Travel Channel. Right. And uh, I've actually been going up to, uh, with uh, Ed and Marsha up there, Distortions Unlimited, mm -hmm. which is, you know, they, they're like the big dogs in the fright oh, industry, yeah. you know. And I'm a huge Halloween guy. I mean, I, I flip cars in my driveway on Halloween. I have ambulances and hearses. So working with them is, is, is pretty sweet because they're like, Okay, so we want this zombie, right? And it's giving birth to an alien, you know, like this kind of stuff. So it's really sweet. So I've been up there. And, uh, it, you know, that show is the real deal. I can honestly tell you that when they say, Monty doesn't know what he's drawing, or they come in and look at something, mm -hmm. they have not seen it. It's totally legit. And so they just say, hey, Monty, why don't you come up on this day? We've got some work for you. Nice. And I take my drawing tablet uh, where I draw on screen. And I take it up there, and they just set me down in front of it and say, you know, we need some monsters, we need some zombies, or whatever. Uh, so that's been really fun. It's a little stressful, though, because you are on display. Right. You know, you can do this in your studio, and you have 30 hours to put into it. And when you got 30 minutes to crank out something, like, okay, so here's what I'm envisioning, right? And you're like, uh, okay. You know, so th those aren't the super polished pieces you see there. They are the rough, down and dirty, 
really capture the feeling. Right. And then they'll give those to their highly accomplished sculptors. Some of them they bring in, some are local. Mm -hmm. um, I do not do any sculpting myself, so uh -huh. I'm just on the concept end of it. But they want somebody who's fast and creative right. and, you know, doesn't rock the boat. You know, they, yeah. they, this is what they need, and that's what I do because I am a hired hand. <laughs> you know, that's what I tell people. What do you need this thing to do? Just tell it <laughs> and pay it. It's ready to roll. <laughs> And that's exactly how they roll, because that's what they said in the interview. Fast, <laughs> don't rock the boat. Got to be good. Got to be yeah. world class. And you know, it seems like every industry. I don't care if I'm painting an airplane or a motorcycle. I just did this John Wayne uh, bike and sidecar that I had 200 hours in, and the client had to come out from Iowa, and it was literally down to the wire. We're, we're putting clear coat on it. He had to drive it back. He had two days to build it, and then drive it to Maine, you know, for the show, because it was the unveiling. And, you know, you think sometimes these deadlines are, you know, like fudged for entertainment purposes. 99% of the time, they're not. They're legit, and you're like, I really have two days to paint this guitar from start to finish or whatever. And, you know, you find a way to get it done. Right. And if you are like me, where you're, you're really trying to build that career of being fast and reliable and fairly priced, you shouldn't run out of clients as long as you deliver the goods. Right. You know, and I don't miss deadlines. I don't sleep a lot, but I don't miss deadlines. <laughs> awesome, man. Well, thank you so much oh, for your welcome. time today. You're welcome. Appreciate uh, it. Uh, this is Groovy here at Breckenridge Brewery. This is Monty Moore, master artist, sculptor, just dude, uh, future ex-wife artist, creator. creator. <laughs> Going to be at the Denver Comic Con and also the San Diego Comic Con, pretty much everything, right? Yeah, and actually even uh, going to Italy in May for the uh, new show for them, which is called the Florence Fantastic Fest. And nice. it's, uh, it's going to be a pretty big show, pretty awesome. And uh, so I'm slated to go there as well. So we're internationally known about the microphone. <laughs> That's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> All right, rock on. See you guys at Comic Con. <laughs>